Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I thought I'd do a bit of an art haul or unboxing video as I've bought a few new watercolour supplies over the past few weeks and thought it would be fun to open them up and share them with you. It might also influence what I decide to paint or paint with in future videos, so I hope you enjoy it. There is also an extra supply that I'll be showing you at the end of the video, which while I haven't purchased it recently, haven't used or shown you yet either, so make sure you watch till the end as it's absolutely gorgeous. All the items mentioned today will be listed in the description box below if you're interested, and all of the supplies mentioned are ones that I've bought with my own money, so this video is not sponsored. To start off with then, this first item is one I bought from Amazon and is a very small round paintbrush by German manufacturers Da Vinci. It's a size 2 0 from their Cosmotop 5580 series and cost me £11.08. It has a short red lacquered hexagonal handle, a silver ferrule and has extra smooth light brown synthetic bristles which I'm really hoping will keep a nice point for painting in all those fine details to my watercolour paintings. I think it looks really good quality, it's nice to hold and whilst I don't have many brushes by this brand, the couple I do have I'm really pleased with, so I'm looking forward to trying this one out. Now the next item is not strictly just a watercolour supply, but one I first heard about a while back but haven't managed to get hold of in the UK until now and that's these paint pucks. If you've not seen or heard about these before, they are soft silicon devices that suck onto the bottom of your water container to help clean your brushes. And funnily enough, I got a comment recommending these on my channel just yesterday. This pack of two cost me 9.99, which I think is a fair bit for what they are, but they are advertised as being suitable for all brush sizes and types and are dishwasher safe. I'm not sure I'd want to put them in my dishwasher, but I guess it means that they're pretty hard wearing and can be washed at hot temperatures. I'm also a bit wary of using them with any natural hair brushes, as they are more delicate than synthetic ones, but the different size nubs means you are supposed to be able to clean even fine tip brushes without damaging them. For me, I think I'm more likely to use them for ink or acrylic painting, but let me know if you've tried them and what your thoughts are. The next item is another one from Amazon and despite being in quite a large box and having quite a lot of packaging, it is actually just a small 5ml tube of watercolour paint. This is Daniel Smith's Cobalt Teal Blue and cost me £12.17, although it may be cheaper elsewhere. And I've actually already got a painting in mind for this one, so I can't wait to get and try it out. It contains pigment PG50 and unlike my Winsor & Newton Cobalt Turquoise is a granulating colour which is a property I've recently started to enjoy experimenting with more. It has an excellent light fastness rating, is non-staining and semi-transparent and I think will be a fun addition to any palette where you might want to use it for tropical seascapes or birds for example. So next up is the big box from Jackson's, which I struggled to show on screen and struggled even more to get into. Once inside though, as you can see, are these two really basic plastic paint palettes, which cost just £1.60 each. I like to have a couple of these handy as they really come in useful if you're painting with a selection of different paints from different watercolour sets for example. And they'll be really helpful when I get round to swatching out some of the new tube watercolours I've bought recently. There's not much more to say about these, but I do like the fact that the rectangular wells are slanted and there is plenty of space to put out individual colours and do your mixing on. So moving on to the next supply and some more individual watercolour paints in tubes. This first tube is a Sennelier watercolour in Burnt Sienna, which I must have ordered by mistake, as I already have a tube of this in my set of 12 Snellio paints that I'm yet to do a review on. What I meant to order was a replacement Burnt Sienna for my Schmincke Horridan palette, but since I use quite a lot of this colour in my paintings, I have no doubt that it will get used up. This 10ml tube of Burnt Sienna containing pigment PBR7 costs just £5.60. It's transparent and has a light fast rating of 1, and from the albeit limited experience I have with using Snellier watercolours, they are really bright and vibrant, so it's all good. 
The second watercolour I have is another Daniel Smith tube, but this time in the colour Buff Titanium. I ordered this in the larger 15mm size at a cost of £11.30, as it was better value than buying the smaller size, so I hope I like it. I have seen a lot of other watercolour artists out there who use it though, and I think being fairly neutral will be really useful in my animal paintings, as well as having multiple other applications. This soft sand coloured shade is semi-transparent, granulating, low staining and extremely permanent, and I'm really curious to try this one out. Okay, this next supply explains the really big box, because it is a large 12 by 18 inch block of watercolour paper. This Fabriano Artistico watercolour block contains 20 sheets of 140 pounds, 100% cotton, cold press paper in a traditional white colour. And it cost me 38 pounds, which works out at 1 pound 80 a sheet. It sounds like a lot, but 100% cotton paper is expensive, and this is actually less per sheet than the Arches paper I have been using. It has also come highly recommended by another watercolour artist here on YouTube, which is the amazing Louise de Massey, and I'll link the video where she mentions this paper in the video description, so if you haven't seen it, you should definitely go and check it out. Turning over, on the back of this pad there is also a lot of information on all the different sizes and surface types available in the range, along with a choice of either traditional white or extra white coloured paper. This paper is mould made, chlorine and acid free, archival and has both internal and external sizing, which makes it very absorbent and suitable for a whole range of watercolour techniques. I do have a smaller 9 by 12 inch block of this paper which is hot pressed, and I do really like it, but I'm keen to see what the cold press version looks like, so let's open it up and take a look. You probably won't be able to see the texture in the paper here, but before I try and show you a close up, I just wanted to show you that although glued on all four sides, there is a small gap at the top right hand corner of this block to make removal of your painting easier once you're finished. So here's a close up of the paper surface, and I hope you can see it clearly and it hasn't gone blurry. I really like the look of the paper and I'm already thinking of some larger painting projects to do to test it out. So that's all the items I've bought recently and it doesn't look much of a haul when you put it together like this, but I did mention at the start of the video that there was also one other item that I bought back in February 2020 and this I'm also yet to use, but I absolutely love it and wanted to show you as it may also feature in a future video. It might also come in handy when I'm looking for somewhere to put these new watercolours. So this is an empty Atworth metal watercolour tin, which has a beautiful pink enamel exterior, which reminds me a bit of the Paul Rubens watercolour palettes if you've seen those. On the back it also has a handy clip, which you can hold on to it securely with if you wanted to paint outside. When you open it up you can also see there's a white enamel interior, and plenty of mixing space. And if that isn't enough you can even lift out this centre part to reveal more. This tin feels really sturdy but is also quite lightweight, and for £14.99 on Amazon I think it was a real bargain, especially since there were also 48 empty half pans included. This means you can build your own perfect custom palette with whatever colours you choose. And my plan at some stage is to do just that, using some of the new watercolours I've bought, as well as some of my old tried and tested favourites too. If you're interested in knowing exactly what size this palette is, I'll put the dimensions in the description box below, but it's much the same as my current Schmincke tin, which I still really love, but it's beginning to look a bit rusty now. In here, as you can see, are a mixture of whole and half pans, some of which I use all the time, and others I barely use at all. 
So it's probably about time for a redo, but let me know if that's something you'd like to see on a video on this channel or not. So that's it guys, that's all the supplies I've got for today's video and I have to say I'm really looking forward to trying them all out. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. And let me know if you have used any of the supplies I've mentioned today and what you thought of them. Don't forget also I've still got a 20% off sale in my Etsy shop until the end of the month and don't forget to join me same time next week when I'll be trying out a different watercolour painting. Until then, thank you so much for watching, have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.